Welcome back to uh, Raznafsar uh, TV. I'm going to show you a toolbar, an Indian uh, sword toolbar. It's a reproduction made in India. This uh, sword uh, saber was purchased many years ago and it has a steel handle and you see that typical shape of a toolbar with the disc and uh, the scabbard is made of a wood. The two parts of wood actually glued to each other and covered with a velvet, as you see, blue velvet, dark blue velvet. It has uh, also a cord, as you can see that, uh, and this cord was used to attach, if you wish, the handle of the toolbar to your wrist. Um, uh, the um, uh, toolbar hilt is a uh, silver overlaid. You know, I'm going to clean it later because it has been not cleaned for 20 years, more than 20 years, and silver oxidizes, as you know. So it was made in today India. Many places in India make swords. The, the, the blade is made of pattern welded steel. As you can see, I'm going to show you the pattern and it has also a maker's mark. You see the maker marks is uh, written Saleh and I'm uh, translating a sword manuscript and this sword manuscript is uh, uh, on uh, Taide Basarat and they already talk about 15th, 16th century that um, Saleh was a very famed uh, sword maker in uh, India. So it's just referring to this uh, sword maker, obviously. It is, you see that it has a, a back edge as well. And uh, as I mentioned it to you, it is a pattern welded blade. Many of these blades in India, if you take a look at them, are made of pattern welded steel. Now we are going to take a look uh, at the other side of the sword. at that uh, here again on the other side of the blade again it is a pattern welded steel and as I uh, you see that the back is uh, serrated and arreposht as it said in Persian Mirza Lutfullah who wrote his uh, manuscript on sword classification from India in Persian calls them arreposht when you see that there's like a saw a serrated uh, uh, back or a saw back like a saw and it is uh, it is a uh, uh, while the seal and I'm going to show it to you so you can uh, take a look at that the blade pattern more closely if you wish um, you see here you can see the pattern uh, it's a wild seal and that's what I meant with a reposht which is a uh, you know like a saw back like a saw right and um, it has also a back edge. Please note, as far as I know, I mean, it has an edge, but not a real sharp edge, because um, in contrast to some other countries, uh, where, like in Iran, where swordsmiths are allowed to make sharp swords, as far as I know, hopefully I'm not mistaken, in India, uh, smiths are not, uh, do not make uh, real sharp swords. They make swords, I mean, they can also harden, they harden also the blade or whatever, quench them, but they don't put a very sharp edge on it. I mean, this can be really easily sharpened, right? It has already an edge, you see, but it's not a keen edge on it, right? As I wanted to mention that, the way, you know, Iranian sword makers of today do and put on their blades. Of course, we, it's a question of legislation in the country where the sword is made. So you can uh, take a look at that. I mean, it's quite, uh, I mean, it's a, this um, fish eye pattern as many modern uh, toolbars are made. The only thing is about this blade is a, a quite, it's not very heavy, but it's a heavy blade, right? I'm now um, cleaning the oxidation, you know, silver oxidation. So you can take a look at this and see how beautiful actually the pattern uh, is, right? When silver oxidizes, it covers the oxidization, covers uh, the uh, o silver overlaid area. So you see this beautiful geometric design was not visible before, but here, the, you know, you can see them. You need just to be careful to rub it very gently, you know. It is, uh, you know, just with the fabric for cleaning the silver, as I have, is a special fabric, you know, cloth, you can do that. You don't need to put any chemical on it. I'm not a big fan of these things. 
so you can see that uh, you can uh, really clean it so geometric designs become quite uh, visible so you see it here right yeah so I'm also cleaning the handle of the toolbar you see toolbar has also you should look at the handle it's like a bulbous and uh, the handle the whole design with the disc and also this uh, short quillings serve uh, to lock your wrist in position i mean actually it just is different to if you want to compare it to persian or ottoman turkish blades or european sabers it locks your wrist which has serves its purpose right or it i mean actually if you do the techniques correctly like a draw cut and keep your blade in motion you do not feel the disc biting into your uh, palm right or your hand uh, the thing is that's what i did you know of course you cannot stretch it the way you can do it with a uh, with a european saber or the way you could eventually do with the turkish kilich or persian shamshir or arab safe but uh, it has a different techniques. I mean, it's a wonderful, wonderful uh, grip for locking your wrist and keep your blade in motion because your wrist is completely locked and then you can do one draw cut after the other in a close quarter and mid quarter combat ranges, of course. Here, you know, the, uh, the handle is cleaned, so I uh, thought I would uh, share it with you again so you see now it's much nicer of course the patina on silver comes back fast but uh, I, I normally don't clean right i just wanted you to see that right and, uh, it has a nice uh, silver as i mentioned to you overlay you see that the handle is attached via resin adhesive material i also wrote an article how they did it in the past if you remember you can go to my academia page and read it because it was not only done to Indian, but to Ottoman Turkish, Persian, uh, Arab safes, and many other sorts of sabers from the region. Some toolbars are only attached with this adhesive material, which is as hard as stone. Some of them are also pinned and riveted, additionally. Yeah. Again, look at the serrated back back of the blade. It has a, a back edge as well. As you can see it here. So I can show it here. I'm, uh, by, uh, I'm going to show this to you so you can uh, take a look at this plate, right? That the blade is uh, locked, I'm uh, trying to do the techniques we use in Razmov Sound System with Tulvar many of my techniques uh, really work there is no problem i just said this reproduction toolbar is on a heavier side right um, as far as balance is concerned it could have be possibly made a bit uh, lighter but if you have strong arms and i uh, believe i do you can really handle this very well and uh, as i said to you the locked position is something new for me because normally i don't use as you know in our system we do not use toolbar but many of the techniques uh, which you can, uh, which we use in Razmov Sar system, like this one, right? Shamshida's Chapara Sadan, or uh, this uh, figure eight, as we say, in, uh, in upward or whatever. Actually, with the toolbar, you can do it in a very good way. The conjunction with the separ is also very good. You can move the separ. You can make a threatening pose with a inverted uh, threat of a of a, a thrust position and then coming back and cut all these things um a heavy cut you can do it as well you don't basically feel the disc biting into your hand 
at all. You know, if you do the techniques properly, right, the way the you know, let's say in the a in the area of India or Middle East or West Asia is done, you see that although we did, as I said, as I mentioned it before, we did not use. Uh, you see, it can also turn. I didn't feel anything in my hands that it was uh, biting in the hand at all. So this is uh, something which was very nice. Wanted to share with you and uh, thank you very much and have a nice day.